everyone. Um, my name is Kelly, and I am the coordinator for a study abroad program here at San Mateo County Community College District. And uh, today, joining us, we have um, Chicago Walker. She is acting director of international education. And we have two special guests from UK, Dr. Thompson and uh, Mr. Debo from uh, BGU. They are in UK right now. Thank you for joining us. We also have Dr. Alice Yang, um, acting director from uh, Special uh, International Education. And thank you all for joining us. So first let's have uh, Chicago uh, say a few words of welcome. Thank you, Chicago. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is the third session for Transfer Abroad. So we are very excited about uh, presenting you with this information today. Um, so BJU is our newest partner to the district. We recently finalized the, con uh, the agreement with them uh, so that now our SMSU students have an option to uh, transfer abroad in the UK. So this is very exciting. Uh, it was actually my executive director who worked closely with Wayne uh, to make this possible. And, um, you know, it's it's nice to meet you both too. It's my first time to meet the, the representative from BGU as well, even though via Zoom. So I'm, I'm personally very excited to hear all about your school and then the programs available to the students and the opportunities. Uh, so thank you again for, for taking the time to meet with us. And I just wanted to that just since their evening time, plus they were regular working hours, so I appreciate that you took the time out of your busy schedule to meet with our students today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chicago. Chicago. Uh, my name is Wayne Dibble. Thank you, colleagues, for joining us um, uh, during your, during the lunchtime there. Um, I'm Wayne Dibble. I'm the head of uh, international at Bishop Grosseteste University in Lincoln in the UK, and I'm joined by my colleague today, Dr. Abibola um, Thompson, um, who is uh, one of our senior lecturers on our business program. So she's part of our business faculty. Um, I think the purpose of this evening uh, is just to uh, give you a little bit of an introduction to BGU or Bishop Grosseteste University, tell you a little bit about ourselves. Um, talk a little bit about Lincoln, um, the relationship that we have in terms of the transfer agreement, and then Bola will, uh, Dr. Thompson will be uh, explaining a little bit about the business program and the opportunity for the students um, if they wish to transfer into our one of our bachelor degrees in business. Um, it's quite an informal session. Um, if anybody wants to just raise their hand, etc., we've got a little presentation but please raise your hand if I can see it or shout out with any questions, et cetera, at, at, at that stage. Um, you don't have to wait till the end for any questions. Happy to take them as we go. Uh, is, is that the same for you, Bola? Yes, that's why. Bola, did you want to just introduce yourself a little bit about your background? Hi, my name is Bola Thompson and I work with um, BGU as a lecturer in business. Uh, I have a PhD in economics and an MSc in business economics. Um, my colleague is also here, Georgina, who would uh, be sitting in and helping to talk about the business side as well. So we're happy to take any questions. Sorry, Georgina, I didn't see you there, sorry. <laughs> It's all right. Um, I'm just here to support Bola and just in case if there's any needed from me. So Georgina is also a, a member of our faculty uh, in the business department and, and teaches on the uh, the bachelor's and, and the postgraduate programs, as does uh, as does Bola. OK, so um, I'll kick off then. Um, we've got a little presentation. Um, I'll try and share my screen. Um, bear with me. Hopefully this is working. Can you see that? Yeah, we can. So Bishop Grosseteste University um, is uh, a, a small university in the U in, in the city of Lincoln um, in the UK. Uh, we're based in the East Midlands. 
Uh, so we're in the middle, but towards the east coast uh, in, in the UK, uh, in, in the county of Lincolnshire. Um, we are over 160 years old, um, and we started off um, initially all those years ago as a teacher training college, um, which was founded by the Anglican Church um, to, to teach uh, female teachers of, of primary education schools. Over the years, um, we've developed, we were known as Lincoln Teaching College right at the very start, but we've involved um, not just in our in terms of our, our campus, et cetera, our programs, but in terms of we've moved from a college to a university college. And um, once we, about 40 years ago, um, we became a university college. We renamed ourselves after Robert Cross Test, who was a famous 13th century scientist, uh, philosopher and educator. And he was the first Bishop of Lincoln and was heavily involved in, in, in education um, way back in the 13th century. And if you actually explore Robert Grotesque's writings, you'll see that some of the stuff he was writing about um, in terms of light, um, science, physics, etc., cetera, um, they were very much at the forefront and, and, and leading edge of, of the time. And he actually started to talk about things um, in terms of astronomy and light and refraction, which Newton then went on um, used as the basis of his, his work some sort of four or five hundred years later. Um, we are a small university. Um, we have just over 2,000 students, um, a range of subjects um, in, from sort of archaeology to history, business, drama, psychology, counselling, um, education studies, early years education, special educational needs, sports, um, military history, uh, English literature. Uh, so our, our subjects tend to range around the um, arts, humanities and social sciences curriculum areas. Um, and we do a range of programmes from foundation year, foundation degrees to bachelor's degrees, master's degrees and also uh, PhD level. We've recently uh, appointed a new vice chancellor, uh, Professor Karen Stanton who has, uh, is an experienced uh, vice chancellor and has worked at uh, a number of different universities in the UK. Uh, and she joined us uh, to lead the institution in August, 2023. Um, as part of the undergraduate program, um, we also deliver, um, we, we're quite unique in a way that we don't just, we have what we call sing, single honours degrees. Um, and their degrees, which basically um, just focus on one particular subject. So, for example, tonight we're going we're gonna to be talking about the single honour degrees in business, um, and, and they focus just on, on business and business-related topics. Um, but we also, some students do have the ability, um, if they're joining us directly at level four, they have the ability to study joint degrees. So you could do um, an education and sport degree rather than just a sport degree. You could do a psychology and education degree, a psychology and sport degree, et cetera. So there are a combination um, of, of different degrees that students who join us directly um, at level four can do other than just the single honours. And as I mentioned earlier, we, we do postgraduate and PhD level study as well. A little bit about Lincoln. Um, Lincoln is often described as one of the UK's hidden gems. It's, uh, it's a small city. It's um, a relatively cheaper city than, than other um, bigger cities and, and more traditional well-known cities in the UK. So the cost of living in Lincoln is cheaper than places such as Manchester, Birmingham um, and London. Um, we're about, as I say, we're, we're located in the middle of the UK. We're about two, two and a half hours on the train from London. We've got uh, direct train journeys and a direct train line down in the city of London. Um, we're an hour away from the city of Nottingham about an hour from Sheffield, two, two and a half hours from Birmingham, two and a half hours from Manchester, and we're about an hour, hour and a half from the uh, the East Coast, um, should any students want to go and uh, have a look at the North Sea and experience the, the beaches on the East Coast of east coast of the UK. Um, Lincoln is, 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 a, is a mixture of what I, I like to describe as quintessential UK architecture, so it's very old, very traditional type buildings. Um, it's home to one of the uh, Europe's oldest cathedrals, 
Um, we're very proud to host and be home to Lincoln Cathedral, um, which is one of the oldest and biggest um, Gothic buildings in Europe. Um, and our, any, any student that graduates from BGU has the, uh, has the privilege of actually graduating in the magnificent location of, of the cathedral. We also have a, a Roman castle, which is home to one of the first um, original copies of the Magna Carta. So there were four original copies of the Magna Carta, and one of them sits in, uh, in, in Lincoln Castle as its home. And they're opposite each other. And, and the, the part of uphill Lincoln is um, very traditional, very uh, quintessential English architecture with cobbled squares, medieval cobbled squares, et cetera. And we also have a very, um, we have one of the steepest hills in the UK. So one of the steepest roads in, 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 in the UK, and it's actually called Steep Hill, which leads down into the high street of Lincoln. Um, but coupled with that, it's also a modern city. There's been lots of development happening um, down by um, what we call the Brayford Waterfront. Um, lots of restaurants, bars, cinemas, university buildings, etc., from Lincoln University. Um, and, and so we, we've got a big, nice mixture of quintessential and contemporary modern buildings in Lincoln. It's relatively small. It's probably no bigger than sort of four or five miles, um, which is probably six, six to seven kilos in uh, kilometers in, in diameter. You can walk around it quite, walk around the city center quite comfortably. Um, and it's, it's a very safe, um, safe city for students. Um, the BGU campus, we're located on one campus in what we call the uphill part of Lincoln, which is a, a 10 minute walk from the cathedral and the castle. And I would say that I like to describe our campus as being a bit of a microcosm of the city. We have some very, very old buildings. Um, so we have some of the original school buildings and the college buildings from the 19th century, 1862, which are over 150 years old. Um, but we also have a, a combination of new buildings and new teaching facilities as well. Um, we're one of the sort of the only universities to have a a traditional cinema on campus, which couples up for, for drama and, and lectures as well, but is, is a full working cinema and, and the student unions play movies there, etc. cetera, for the students. And we have the usual facilities that you'd expect to find in a university campus with a sports hall, dining room, coffee shops, library facilities and, and learning, um, learning spaces throughout the campus. Um, if you wanted to find out a little bit more about Lincoln, and some of the surrounding areas, because Lincoln is, is what we call a rural city based in the in the rural county of Lincolnshire. Um, yourselves and students, etc., can see a little bit more at visitlincoln.com, and that'll explain a, a little bit more about Lincoln itself, but also some of the surrounding areas um, and the Heritage Engl England sites, etc., that we have close by us. We're very conveniently located to airports. Our nearest airport is a very small airport called Humberside, which is 45 minutes away. Um, but we're, we're about two hours from Birmingham Airport, two hours, 45 minutes from Manchester, three hours from London Heathrow, two and a half hours from Stansted. Um, and there's also another small airport called East Midlands, which is not too far. It's about, um, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes from the campus. So there are a number of different options in, in how people can get, get to the campus via um, the main main entry points from overseas. Okay, so I'm gonna now hand over to Bola, who's going to talk a little bit about the business program. Um, you, you're probably aware that the progression agreement is for a two plus two program, where the students who finish your associate's degree at the various different colleges can come on to our BA business program. So over to you, Bola. All right, thank you very much, Wayne. So um, going over what we do from year two, if you join us, what we do is um, we offer these courses in your year two. So you've got digital marketing strategies based on our BA business because we've got three different pathways that you can go to. So I'll go through the BA business and then if the students wanted the BA marketing or BA finance, we'll go through the um, subjects as well or models that you learn. So we've got in semester one, you have the first three 
courses, which is your digital marketing strategy, using data for information and um, decision making and macroeconomics. And then you've got the one which is in asterisks. So you it's an optional model which students could do. It could be CSR or a graduate attribute announcement model where students get to learn some six different attributes to have um, more skills into being more employable, a global citizen, information, city, uh, information literacy, academic literacy, all the skills that would be transferable and make them more um, employable in future. Uh, the models themselves are 30 credit units each. And what we do is uh, you study those over six weeks. And the timing for our lectures could, is we've got 9.30 a.m. till 12.30. And then we have a break. And then people, students come in again at 1.30 to 2.30 for a seminar or some other form of lectures just to reinforce the knowledge. Uh, progression then goes to it. Sorry, in semester two, they do human resources, equality, EDI, we'll say, managing projects, and then developing new professionals. Some of these courses make them uh, develop the students in such a way that they're able to also go in for placements. And in these placements, students go into real world scenarios where they could uh, use all these skills they've learned from studying with us over the course of um, the year. And I've seen students go into different places such as Medic, which is a pharmaceutical company. They've gone to HR companies just so they can learn how to become, uh, they can learn the ropes in developing their own um developing their own skills and developing their own career. Moving to year three, they learn uh, managing and leading for success. This teaches them how to become more, uh, teaches them to become skilled leadership, uh, skilled to have skills in leadership. Then they've got a business research where they would write their own, they would research and write their own topic of interest. We support all our students by making sure that they understand the roles in which, um, not just the roles, but they understand the tools that they need in conducting research and being able to assess information that they could as easy as possible, which then brings them to the capstone project, which they do in the second semester. This takes them a while understanding how to be proactive in gathering information and also being able to understand ethics and different knowledge that they need. Uh, based on what we do, during the course of their program with us, they also gain a CMI level five qualification. This is Chartered Management Institute, which gives them a qualification that they do not need to take an exam on anymore because most of our models are being mapped to the qualification itself. This is very highly sought after qualification and it is recognized internationally. Wayne, do you mind moving to the next one? Thank you. Right, so for people who want to come on the finance pathway, what they would do is study financial um, models. So it would include them having to do accounting fundamentals in the first semester and in the second semester, they would be doing investment and finance. Again, they have for, or if you were doing business anyway, everyone would have a baseline model that they would study. If you were to go on the finance pathway, you would study something, just a model different from one of the models that you do in your um, year two for business. For year three, when you progress, you end up studying an extra financial reporting and auditing uh, model as well, because we want students to develop all the... Um, relevant skills that they need to become, that would be useful for them if they wanted to become an accountant, forensic accounting, for example, people need to understand all the uh, necessary 
theories back in Europe and then gain the skills as they move forward. Again, these are the models that you will study, but just as you progress, like I've said earlier, you would get, because our models are mapped to uh, CMI, you would graduate with a CMI qualification. Uh, could we go to the finance, uh, sorry, to the marketing one, sorry. So in terms of marketing, again, if you look at the uh, slides, it's slightly different because we've introduced in year two, students will be studying innovation and creativity in marketing. This is solely based on what students need to understand when it comes to marketing. Most of our students that are presently with us or the ones that I have spoken to on the foundation course, just like Wayne said, we stitch from foundation all the way to PhD. So the ones on foundation course, I've just picked up interest on wanting to be um, into digital marketing. So if they were coming onto our marketing pathway, they would be choosing, they would be studying things that would include consumer behavior, consumer experience, which would help them to understand the uh, customer needs and how to actually address the marketing campaign to then make them for what, to then make the organization that they're working for be able to attract more customers. Again, in year three, they would be studying brand strategy and management. This is also about understanding how the, the organization they want to work with or the people that they are having a marketing campaign could develop strat sorry could develop a more strong brand so that's one of the things we're aligning where that's one of the those are the models that we're studying if you move on i would then talk about what we do so generally it be it the BA business, be it the finance pathway or marketing pathway, what students would learn, the way we teach mainly is that we teach for 12 weeks and it could be face-to-face -face teaching. And during this face-to-face -face teaching, we've got interactive lectures where we make sure that the pedagogy that we follow is that students are able, we teach based on what students want and we make sure that students are actually the center, the student-centered learning. We have workshops, we have seminars that relate to um, the topics that we're teaching. So students get to have a pre-session activity that gives them a baseline of what they need to do prior to coming into the lecture. And then during the lecture, there are several activities or tutorial sessions that we offer. So moving to <clears throat> how we do our ass assessments. Um, we do not offer exams at all. So our assessments is based on coursework or practical. Before I move to the assessment, uh, one of the things we do is either our teaching is six weeks or 12 weeks, by the way. So I, I, I've put six weeks in, uh, 12 weeks in total, but we've got six weeks, one and 12 weeks in total as well. Uh, so the assignment is just we do a single piece of work and it could be a coursework or a practical. One of the things is each of the models that we have is based on a 30 credit unit. And for us to be able to achieve those uh, 30 credit units, what we tend to do is, okay, we give them a practical assignment, which if they were to do a presentation for each of those credits, it will be 60 seconds per the credit. So, Students tend to do a presentation of 15 minutes or 18 minutes based on what the assignment is about. And then your coursework at level five, you've got students writing a 2000 words coursework. This could be, it could be a portfolio that follows a reflection that follows the students having to write about um, a guide to what they've done. It could be a report, it could be an essay. And in level six, it's the same thing. We have different formats of giving them the coursework to write a portfolio. It could be report, it could be essay. And your cap, the capstones project, which is the overall project, is 6,000 words that lets the students develop their writing for, so it's like presenting a 
dissertation where the students actually develop their research questions and do um, some qualitative or quantitative analysis and then give us their findings at the end of the whole report. So in level five, what we do is we have one week which is dedicated to a work placement and it's part of one of the models that we teach, which is called the developing professional. For this placement, students go to different organizations to immerse themselves into the day-to-day -day dealings of the organizations. And what they do is every day would be a different kind of learning experience for them. They could go from HR to the back office to writing, um, to gathering information for them. Some of our students have been to uh, Coca-Cola, Euro Pacific, they've been to, um, some are going to JP Morgan soon. You've got people going to LORIC. LORIC is a research center that is aligned with the BGU as well. So uh, after the week, they come back and then tell us, they do a um, presentation to tell us what they've learned about uh, themselves, about the organization and how they've gained some skills and what they could improve on to better themselves and center themselves in their career development, uh, in their career development. Uh, we have done and we keep doing various activities with the students. Uh, in May, I think coming May, we will be visiting a place called uh, Hill Holt Hood, where, uh, where they do um, activities such as uh team working activity it's an outdoor place where we just get students together to understand the ideas of team working we've gone to places such as morgan cars amazon fulfillment center just so students can see day-to-day -day runnings of what happens in the organization and how they could learn from that organization and network within the organization because many of the things we do including which i mentioned before is bringing industry experts into the um teachings teaching that we do this helps them to develop network that would enhance their uh, future employability. And those network I have seen develop into uh, employment for the students. In January this year, we went to a place called Transmission in London, where we talked about marketing. And then we did a West End tour of London, going around different shops, learning about how they developed and how they became the names that they became around the West End area and how they became uh, very, uh, very profitable. So that's those are some of the things that students, your students will enjoy when they come into London. I mean, getting an international recognized uh, degree is also helpful because it enhances the students' ability to be able to have world view. Right, okay, thank you. So there are opportunities for the students to be able to move to uh, MSc International Business, which is one of the programs that we run here uh, within BGU as well. I and Georgina teach on that model. It's a, sorry, on the course itself, it's a nine months, one year course, which develops students, um, which helps the student to develop themselves and gain understanding of international business. Then there are some other specialized master's programs that students could go into. There is MBA and then like Wayne has said earlier, we do take on PhD students. Students are able to have various kinds of employment opportunities, including data analysts, they could be business advisors. I've got students who have gone on to become um, project manager in sort out, sort out organizations. I've got management consultants and there are people who could be actual analysts. So the, the employment opportunities for the students are endless. So I hope, I think, Wayne, just yep. over to you, or Georgina, if there's something I've missed. Um, I believe Bola has covered almost everything. Um, and uh, 
um, something that we do different compared to the other uni here in the UK is that we do what we call block teaching. Um, so we're trying to uh, get a student to come to the to the campus for BA business student. It will be two days away. Two days. Yeah. Yeah. And for uh, the MSA, sorry, the the uh, MSA International Business Program is the same. They will come here two days a week. So we will encourage our student to uh, take part time jobs if they would like to, and uh, um, we are um, more than happy to help the student to find a placement. So for for the placement module, um, Bola mentioned there is a hundred percent guaranteeing that the student will have a placement because that's part of the. Um, the 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 module. We were more than happy for students to find a placement themselves. But if they can't, we have local resources. We have network to the business, uh, both local business and the multinational companies. So we will ensure our students all be able to find a placement. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Thank you happen. very much, colleagues. Um, yeah. So I mean, as as we say, it, it it's part of a transfer agreement that that we signed with the the district and and the college of San Mateo. Um, you'll be aware that you, you, I'm sure you'll be aware that the associate degrees that they study um, at your institution are equivalent to what we call in the UK level four or a higher national certificate. So basically that's the first year of our degree program. We've done the mapping between some of your business courses um, at all three colleges. And if this works, it should take us to the web page where you'll be able to see the courses that the students need to take to be able to progress. Okay, so we've got the different, the three colleges, Skyline, Canada, and um, San Mateo. And they're the courses that the students are required to take to be able to progress to um, to, to this, uh, the second year and to be able to transfer successfully. Because your associate's degree is obviously in America and, and they're taught and assessed in English, um, if you have an American student or if you have any international students studying with you that want to transfer because they've already been taught and assessed in English, Carlos, you've got a question. Uh, yes, I just uh, thank you. I just wanted to understand where it says automatic scholarship of 2000 and then it, there's an equal sign. Does that mean 2000 to 10,000 or 2000 equals 10,000? No. So I'm going to come to that point, but that means that the, the fee this, uh, this the fee for September twenty four is twelve thousand nine hundred forty five pound, but because you get an, uh, the students from San Mateo get an automatic scholarship of two thousand pound, that brings the fee down to ten thousand nine hundred forty five pound per year. Oh, thank you. I didn't know you were going to explain it. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. So uh, yeah, just coming back quickly to the IELTS because they're, they're already doing an associate's degree that is assessed and taught in English. Um, they won't need an IELTS or a TOEFL score to progress. Um, in terms of tuition fees, yet yeah, our tuition fees for September 24 entry, as we say, are around about 13,000 uh, British pounds. Um, but as I say, that, that automatic scholarship that we, we're going to give to, to San Mateo students with the associate degree brings that down. So just under 11,000 pound, which um, equates to, I think, just under $14,000. Um, and that's that that will be per year. So it, I think it favors it, it's quite favorable in terms of um, the difference in tuition fees in, in terms of, of UK institutions. But obviously, there, there, there's other sort of um, things, factors that students have to consider as well. And then the fees for students who wish to transfer in 2025, they're currently being reviewed and should be agreed um, by the end of May. So next time we have any conversations um, once they're agreed, we can we can start to send them across to, to you, you guys, so you're aware of that. Um, so where would the students stay if they came to live with us? Um, well, we've got three types of accommodation um, at VGU, student accommodation, which is our own accommodation. Um, we're very lucky enough to turn around and say that um, for the last two or three years, we've been nominated in the top three of UK institutions voted by the students for the quality of their of our accommodation. So we've been voted in the top three for the last couple of years by a What Uni Award, which is a, a, a series of awards voted for, uh, for the students by the students, as it were. Um, so we have three types of accommodation. Wickham Hall, which is around about six or seven years old, um, and it's what we call cluster flats. 
So there's six um, ensuite rooms to one flat. Um, so each room's got it's, it's a double double room with a double bed, um, lots of storage space. Each room's got their own toilet and showering facility um, ensuite, and then the six rooms share one kitchen. So it's like a little apartment type thing, but with six ensuite ensuite bedrooms. Constance Stewart Hall is an older type um, accommodation. Um, where they're single rooms, double rooms with a double bed, um, but they're, they're off a corridor, so they're three floors, uh, long corridor with rooms off the corridor, and then two rooms share one bathroom and one toilet. Um, that's slightly cheaper than, than Wickham Hall. Um, and then we're very lucky to, at the moment, we're having a new student village being built, which offers a range of accommodation from um, single rooms to actually full apartments, studio apartments for students if they wish to have their own little apartment with kitchen and showering facilities and toilet toilet facilities, etc. Um, each accommodation has um, a common room where students can sit down, watch a bit of TV, chat, have dinner, etc. Uh, and, and just mingle as a community. Um, and Wickham Hall and Constance Stewart are both on campus. And the new student village is literally a two minute walk over the road. Chris, you have a question. Thank you, and thanks again for the very informative uh, presentation. Uh, one quick question you briefly mentioned on, on the previous slide about the uh, fees of uh, 12,945. I was just wondering, does that include the uh, fees for the for the rooms for the No, it doesn't. Accommodation is separate. Um, and the reason for that is because students don't have to um, don't have to live on campus. They can seek private accommodation in the city should they wish to. Um, so if, if there was four or five students coming over as friends, they could go and rent a house or an apartment in the city centre if they wanted to. What tends to happen in the UK is that um, UK students tend to like to live on campus in their first year. Um, and then in their second year, they like to, they tend to migrate out and become more independent and, and go off into the city and um, and rent their own house. So I I, I can I can put the fees on the um, I was only updated about the fees earlier today when I did a tour for somebody. Um, but the Wickham Hall comes in at around about one hundred and forty five pound a week, and Constance Stewart is is around about one hundred and twenty three. Um, I'm not too sure of the student village because that has different levels. But what I can do is um, what I'll do in the next week or so, I'll, I'll get the actual fee information from our accommodation team um, and then I can send that over for via Chicago, uh, for Chicago and um, you can all have the fees for the accommodation as well. But no, the tuition fee is separate from the accommodation fees. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, one last thing, I don't want to uh, get much of your time. You, you mentioned as well about the associate's degree being equivalent to the UK level four. And my question, I'm sure students might ask, how would be the bachelor's degree in the UK would translate to our BA? Uh, but for the sake of time, I'll just maybe get the answer offline. Maybe we'll get an email from you uh, for additional information. Thank you. Say that again. So what, the American bachelor's? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that, that equates. But obviously, yeah, so that would equate. So your American bachelor's, is, it, it goes up to level six, as does our, our bachelor's. So it, 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 that, that equates. How about from the UK to the US? But once they receive their bachelor's from the UK. Oh, no, so that'd be fully recognized in the US as a bachelor, yeah. And also, our bachelor, normally in the US, the bachelors don't come with what we call honors. So it's just, it would just be a bachelor degree, whereas ours is a bachelor with honors. And the honors indicates that they have, they've done a period of research with that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and also on that on, on that um, slide there, I've put the accommodation email address for the accommodation team. So if you had any questions regarding accommodation or if you have any students come to you with any questions that they want for accommodation, then you can get brochures online or you can email my colleagues in the accommodation team. OK, so really, then it's like, a, why choose BGU? Um, well, we're a small institution and we have a very small cohort of international students so we have at the moment out of our 2000 students we have uh, around about 70 to 75 international students they come from around about 19 different countries 
um, sort of India, Nigeria, Sri Lanka, mainland Europe, um, Kenya, Ghana, China, Singapore, etc. Um, so whilst you'll get a authentic culturally international experience because there will be a range of international students, you will also be taught in groups with UK students, giving you a real sort of authentic cultural experience and, and giving your students the opportunity to, to make friends with UK students and, and students from further afield as well. As I said earlier, we're located in a very historic and a very beautiful part of the UK, and it is relatively cheap compared to other parts of the UK, and it's a very safe city as well. It's very quiet, it's small, um, and, and, and very safe. Um, I put some facts and key facts and some of the awards that we've won recently. Um, we do pride ourselves on the quality of our teaching and learning and also our student support. We have small class sizes. So students would typically be in classes between 12 and 20 students. So they would get real good uh, support from the teachers and the lecturers. Other UK institutions, you're typically taught in groups of 50 upwards. Um, so sometimes lecturers don't know your names, etc. I mean, I take great pride in the fact that I know most of our international students. I'm able to do that because it's a small cohort. Um, and, and if any students have any problems, etc., we, we've got that personal relationship. And the lecturers, I think Bola and Georgina would agree that um, because their classes are smaller, they're able to support the students um, to a lot greater depth than they would have been at, at their previous institutions. Right. Um, and we're, as I said to you before, our, our halls and student accommodation, um, yeah, began, was, was a winner in the uh, in the what uni awards, and also we're very good on career prospects in the UK. Um, we get surveyed; students get surveyed every year after they leave the university to identify where they progress to, and if they're in graduate, um, what we call graduate employability. Um, and whether they're in graduate level jobs, et cetera. And uh, we came third for our career prospects, a third out of all the universities in the UK. Um, I've also put on there a, a link to a web page, um, which takes you to another page, which sort of really is a bit of an ego trip, which tells you all about our, um, yeah, our key facts and, and reasons for, for choosing us, et cetera. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you look at that. Uh, 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 at your own sort of leisure and that's the um, that's the end of the, the presentation so it's your chance to ask us any questions if you obviously if you need any further information um, you can um, Chicago's got my email so you feel free to share that amongst colleagues and, and you can always email me um, for any further information any initial, I think, did somebody have a hand up there, Georgina? Did you have your hand up there? No, okay, no, sorry. I think Carlos has got his hand up. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, is it a requirement to have an associate degree for a student from one of our campuses to transfer to BGU, or can they transfer without the associate degree? No, they would need to, they would need to complete, the, to, to be able to transfer to year two, our year two, so our, our level five, they would need to have the associate degree. Thank you. And they would need to study specific courses. So, you know, the courses on the web page that um, I think Kelly put in the chat, she put a link to a web page in the chat that outlines the specific courses that they need to have studied as part of their associate degree to be able to transfer into our level five because we've done the mapping and the mapping enables them courses to be credited against our level four program thank you may i continue if no one else has yes yeah, yes by all means carlos yeah okay thank you um are international students allowed to work off campus in the uk yes so international students at the moment as part of their visas so they have to go and get a, a student route visa um as part of that student route visa international students are allowed to work for 20 hours a week during term time, but they're allowed to work what we call full-time, 40 hours, 37 hours, 40 hours during holiday time. Thank you. Um, in order to apply, students would need, and again, if you have any students interested in applying, 
I will give you more detail um, nearer the time uh, about how to apply, but they would fill in an online application form. Um, we have also in, uh, issued a sort of conditional offer letter. So if you get any students enrolling, let's say, for example, you get some students enrolling on your programs in this September with the intention of transferring to us, they would get uh, an, uh, an, uh, an initial conditional offer from us. So we, we, we forwarded your, your colleagues uh, a conditional offer letter that outlines they have to complete the associate's degree, but on completion of that, with the specific modules, um, they can then apply to come to our level five. So it's like a conditional offer, but they would have to fill out an online application form, but then they would, we would look quickly marry the, the fact that they're from Canada, Skyline or San Mateo, um, and then we, they, they would just be then offered a place on the level five subject to their student visa, obviously. Thank you. After graduation from the bachelor degree, how many years can international students work full time in the UK? At the moment, it's two years under a postgraduate study visa. So we have a graduate route study visa. And at the moment, uh, international students can stay and work in the UK for two years. If they're lucky enough and they find an employer who wishes to employ them and, and sponsor them as a skilled worker, they can get a five year visa. Thank you. And how many years does it take to get a master's degree in the UK? One year. Thank you. Yep, so, so Bola's quite rightly said in, in the chat there, um, we do have a careers centre, our careers advisory service, which is part of what we call our BG Futures um, building, and our BG Futures building doubles up as a bit of a, an incubation hub for local small businesses, but also it runs a career service which um, advertises part-time jobs in the local area, but gives students advice about interviews, uh, developing CVs, etc., how to go about job searches and stuff like that. Hey, we are. Uh, so, for American students, can they use their FAFSA to apply for financial aid? Uh, Jeb, sorry about that, Jeb. So at the moment, we're not um, eligible. We're not eligible for. We don't. Uh, we're not approved for student financial aid at the moment. Uh, we're in the process of applying for it. So we've um, we've gone and uh, filled all the policies, etc., and we're just waiting for feedback from from the the, the financial aid um, people. Um, yeah, and we're waiting for the feedback for that. So we're in the process of applying. So I can't actually say yes at the moment. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, in terms of payments, normally we ask for a deposit um, and then students are able to pay in three instalments um, to, to make it easier for them in that sense. Out of curiosity, what's the weather like in Lincoln? Uh, what, generally or today? Uh, generally. <laughs> generally, uh, listen, we're in the middle of the UK. It's not, it's not really, really cold. In the winter, it can get cold. I mean, Georgina and, and Bola might say different, but uh, it can get cold. We have a little bit of snow every now and again. It's, the last few months, it's just been wet. Uh, yeah, it's just been grey and wet. Um, but sometimes in the summer, yeah, we, we get a bit of nice weather in the summer. It doesn't touch San Francisco um, and, and the west coast of uh, America, unfortunately. Um, but it's not the coldest in the UK, but equally, it's not the warmest in the UK. Thank you. Great question, Carlos. Um, okay, I have a oh, sorry. Um, since um, Alice asked about the uh, financial aid, so you know we have this uh, Gilman scholarship. Can students use uh, use their scholarship? Um, so fund? what's the Gil what's the Gilman scholarship? A uh, Gilman scholarship is a U.S. government issued scholarship. Um, I can sent to you because um, we work with study abroad students. Many students um, are able to use, um, if they get the scholarship, they can apply for study abroad. Uh, so I, I, think, I think I can answer that okay. question. Because uh, Gilman, that they do need FAFSA account. They need to okay. be a Pell, Pell Grant recipient. So now, yeah, uh, BGU is applying for that. So right now they cannot, they cannot apply for Gilman for this. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, 
follow-up question. If students are interested, do I uh, do we just send them uh, directly to you? Yeah, um, you can do. And, and I'm happy if you've got a number of students who are interested, I'm happy to have another online chat. Um, we are hopefully going to make plans to come and visit. Um, I think Chicago has said to me in the past that you have a, a transfer fair, et cetera, stuff like that um, in the fall. So we are going to make plans to try and, and if we can't make that, but definitely visit and, and do some promotion there. And also um, what we are keen to do, Chicago, I, I was speaking to Bola earlier, but we, we're keen to try and make contact with the uh, the actual curriculum teams at San Mateo Colleges and maybe do some talks or some guest lectures, et cetera, um, on their programs as part of their course so they can get the links with BGU um, before they even come. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're keen to do that. But initially, yes, if you've got any uh, interested students, please put them in touch with me and my, my email address, uh, and I'm happy to take it from there. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, somewhat related to Kelly's request, can you talk briefly about uh, the application process and then the timeline? Uh, let's say if I want to come to BGU, the spring of 2025, uh, when, when do I start the process? Right, so, do do? so we only have one intake a year, so that intake is in September. Okay. Um, so um, they'd have to come in, 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 they'd have to transfer across into September. Um, so the, the earlier they, it depends on when they want to know that they would, it is really dependent on when they know they want to transfer. Um, so let's say, for example, you've got a student now at the end of his first year of their associate degree. Let's say they then decide in the next three months that they want to transfer. The earlier they apply, the better. So really when they come back to you in September, they should look to um, start the transfer, uh, start the application process. You can, they can apply all the way up to March, April time. Um, and, and because because we've got the transfer agreement, it makes it a lot easier and a lot speedier. Um, but obviously we won't be able to confirm their place until they've got the transcripts, until we've been sent the transcripts and the marks from you guys because um, obviously they have to have passed the associate's degree. But yeah, the earlier, the better. I mean, they can't apply a year in advance though. So if they wanted to come in September 25, the earliest they can apply is September 24. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank and you. then so they, they fill in the application form online, they would get an offer letter, uh, mm -hmm. a conditional offer letter from us. We mm -hmm. would then take them through the student visa process by asking them for documents um, to make sure they're legible for the student re the student mm -hmm. visa in the UK. Mm -hmm. And then once you guys have confirmed their grades on the transcript, then that's when we would make the, 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 uh, the, the offer unconditional. Mm -hmm. They would then pay a deposit and then we would issue what we call a, a CAS which is confirmation of acceptance to study, which mm -hmm. they need for a student visa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. And then they don't need any extra additional test scores or anything like that, right? You basically just transcript uh, completion of their associate degree program. That's correct. And maybe you need an essay? <laughs> no, 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 no. So basically no, no. On, on the application form, we just okay. need... We need, we need the application form. On the application form, there's a per, what we call a personal statement, which mm -hmm. basically says, why do you want to come to the UK? Why do you want to study at BGU? What do you want to do in the future? So mm -hmm. it's telling us about them, really. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a, yeah, it's a personal statement telling us about their background, why they're interested in business, what stimulated their, their interest in business over the years. Have they got any experience, ex extracurricular experience? Do they do any volunteering? What leadership skills have they got? So it's it's about them. It's a real personal statement about them, what they've done in the past, why they want to do a business course, why BGU, but also what do they want to do in the future? Mm -hmm. That's where, good. Do they, where do they see themselves? And then, as I say, um, because once we've got the transcript, because we've mapped it, then there's, mm -hmm. there's no issues around tests, etc. Okay. Sounds good. Very straightforward. 
hopefully. This sounds straightforward in, in principle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I appreciate that you are waiving the TOEFL slash IELTS requirement. That removes a huge hurdle for students. Yeah, and again, that, that the that basis of that is because they're being taught and assessed in English at your your mm -hmm. institution. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wayne, are you also working with other American institutions? Uh, so you're the first one. We've oh, just... Wow. Um, <laughs> We've just um, done a uh, an agreement with a, a, a college in Vancouver, um, mm -hmm. so Davis College in Vancouver, mm -hmm. um, and we're just about to explore a partnership um, in South Carolina, but around psychology. Mm -hmm. Some of our students have attended other universities before they came to one of our colleges. So, for example, we may have had students from Brazil, they may have studied in Brazil at a university, and they would come to Scotland College. So if they were to transfer to BGU, will you accept their credits from their previous universities from their home countries? So we would we would then have to undertake a mapping process. So it, it depends, again, so if, if, if they wanted to do a year with you and then transfer to us, they would have to do what we call RPL. So they would have to fill out a form telling us about their transcript and the modules and the learning outcomes of their previous studies. So basically what we what we did with your course, we would have to do with their university course. Thank you. Did, did you get that, Carlos? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. So it can be done, but it's more complicated. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. Oh, well, I think we might be done then, Chicago. Um, unless anyone's got any questions, but as I say, if you've got any questions outside or you go home tonight or tomorrow or the weekend and you think of something, <laughs> don't say, just email me. It's not a problem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wayne and Bo, uh, Dr. Thompson and Georgina as well for joining us today. It's a very good information. And uh, Wayne, please do keep us posted on your FAFSA application status uh, because that is going to be a, um, you know, a good advantage for our American students. So yeah. we would like to know more about that. As we proceed with the process, uh, but for I don't know. I mean, do, do you guys have any sort of um, intelligence about how long it normally takes? I have no idea. Maybe no. Kelly Wallace would know. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a long process usually? I I don't know. Yeah, hopefully not too long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thank you again uh, for the very informative uh, session. Um, students and counselors, we're going to be sharing the recording and the presentation with you via email, uh, probably later today, uh, if not tomorrow. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, uh, if you like to chat with Wayne. Uh, 101, he's, I, I, I think he said he's happy to do it. Yeah, happy to do that. <laughs> yeah so, uh, so great. Thank you again, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Georgina. Thank you. Hope to meet you on our campus. Thank you. Yes, that'd be great. Yes, no, we're out there. Yes, we will try and make Bye that happen. Bye, everyone. Good night. Thank you.